Theater Theatre with uh, Robert. Hello. Morning. Hello, good morning. Are you going to do it your way? Or? <laughs> My way. Yeah. My way. <laughs> Definitely, I'm one. You want me to sing again or? <laughs> no, <Seven>? please don't. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. <laughs> All right. So we have uh, the, uh, the malice replacing prosthesis. Um, the previous surgery um, was performed several times, I think, and, and there was a recurrent prosthesis. The last one was several years ago, and they were torn position underneath the tympanic membrane. And it's, it's quite a strange um, history in terms of uh, audiometry evolution and things like this. This patient is complaining now since few years for a fluctuating uh, hearing loss. And sometimes the, when we, before we performed the hearing test, the airborne gap was not that big. So it was really difficult to make the decision. And then at some point, sometimes the airborne gap was bigger. So it seems that we have a, a, you know, intermittent dislocation of a prosthesis. So it's difficult for you to, to see the position of the prosthesis, but uh, I can show you that I've already made the, uh, uh, the approach, I mean, not the approach, but the um, preparation of the approach, and took a cartilage from the tragus already. So uh, you can see here the uh, tympanic membrane, of course, and, and the, the head of a prosthesis here. What, you can see a little bit of a white here. This is the head of a prosthesis, which seems to be fine here, but it's not the same all the time. So this is why we finally decided to revise and the, 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 the best option for her would be to, uh, I guess, use the malleus replacement prosthesis to stabilize completely the prosthesis because, of course, in this case, there's no more malleus. So it's a right here, and we've got 12 o'clock here, 3 o'clock, 6 and 9. So I will perform uh, an incision of the, of the flap running from uh, here, 6 o'clock, till some more, more, like, more than 12, so it's about 2 o'clock, because I will uh, have to insert the prosthesis here on the left. And now I will elevate the flap in the same way. Let me see if I can increase the light, maybe. No, it's quite a good picture. Is it enough for you, uh, yeah, John? Yeah, it's or fine. Yeah, yeah. This is too light? Too much. All right. It's okay. Fine. Okay, so yeah, of course here, in, th in this case, the, the flap will be more easy to uh, elevate because uh, she's been operated several times, so usually if the, the skin is not atrophic, then it's, uh, it's, um, it's thick enough to, it's, it to, to find the cleavage plane. There is some lack of bone on the left, I can see that, so I need to see whether i be able to place the MRP some 11 o'clock or at 6 o'clock, so we need to see that. Sorry, Robert, Please. I missed it a few minutes ago. Did you say this is one of your previous cases no. or somebody else? Somebody else, somebody else yeah. A and so, uh, but I know exactly what has been done. It was a really good result with a nearly complete closure of the airborne gap and it was, as I said, very difficult to take the decision to make it, to make the revision because I, when sometimes she came, the uh, uh, airborne gap was not that large, but sometimes it was, clearly there was a fluctuation, so uh, we believe that it's uh, a partial dislocation of a prosthesis and probably the, the prosthesis needs to be uh, stabilized. And this is why we had this idea to perform the MRP uh, placement. Malice replacement prosthesis here underneath the cartilage. Oh, of the of the uh, okay. 
tout l'écran. Donc je ne sais pas si je suis centré. Vous n'hésitez pas à me le dire. Hein, parce que... Des couleurs, s'il vous plaît. So this, this section is a little bit more difficult here because it's adherent. So I'm going to use this uh, elevator. Now it's fine. Robert, just a question. Is, uh, has this patient been operated Can previously post auricularly? Yes, uh, no, uh, so, uh, both. I mean, uh, okay, because both. there were several operations. Okay. So uh, that was also transcanal and, uh, and also uh, posterior at the beginning, because it was a cholesteatoma at the beginning. Hydroxylapatone. Yeah, it, uh, that is a poor. Yeah. Yes, and that's interesting because it is exactly the problem that we have. We had with this time of procedure. Uh, exactly uh, according to the uh, the same thing as the video that I show you. The, everything seems fine. We have a, a quite a nice position of the tour of the port, and there's a tilting. You see this lack of. You see how it moves like this. Uh, let's try. I don't know if I can. Can, I, can, can you see the, yeah, this gonna, lateral a good movement? View, yeah, yeah. Robert, can you see if there's a Raman or reflex or if it's. Uh, no, we can't see that. Be I'm sure there is, but. Yeah. I don't see the uh, round window. No. No, really. Maybe. Maybe we can. See, but I'm sure if I push the prosthesis, you will see the round window sign. It'd be interesting. Chris has gone, but it, to, to know what happens with his. Uh, with what? Problem. Chris has gone, but it would be interesting to know whether he's had the same problem with the uh, resident. Yeah, you see the round window sign. Here. Robert, when she had a conductive loss, did you ever do a myringotomy to see if she had serous otitis or fluid behind the eardrum, or could you tell? What do you mean exactly? If I have a conductive hearing loss, what, uh, I, what, no. I, what when is the, the question? Uh, when she had a conductive loss, when it was big, did you... Um, oh, no, there was no... Uh, oh, yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, no, no, there was no fluid behind, but we didn't do it. But the, the uh, tympano, uh, tympanogram was fine, and then the clinical examination, too, so... No, no, sure. I put it, too. It's quite interesting. Is it, it shows how well the, the hydroxyl appetite integrates. Yes, of course. That's the it's good point. And we are here underneath the, uh, the, 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 the cartilage. But of course, I need to remove this porp. And that's the problem now, because I need to see if it's uh, adherent too much or not to the stapes. So I will use. Allez-y, remettez-le maintenant. Voilà, là. Euh, reboot. Bon, alors il faut que. Ouais, il faut vous. Ouais. Ok. Questionnaire sur le left. Je vais vous montrer ça et je vais prendre un peu de temps pour expliquer. the decent patient nerve. Here. The perfect step is, because yeah, I will good. do the silastic bending technique, of course. And it's good because the, the flex never sticks as much as the dense hydroxyl appetite. And here I'm in contact with the stapes and not on the left. As much as I can from the facial nerve. Again, it's important to have both hands free. We need to dissect this very gently because it's clearly very fragile. See, and it's. Um, so, would you use the laser here on these adhesions, or you think you're too close to the nerve? Can you, sp can you speak louder, or would you, would you use the laser here on these adhesions, or are you too oh, close to I the I prefer, nerve? Yes, I prefer using the hook. You see, it's very accurate if we do it like this. Now it's fine. I, uh, I want to have just a, a nice access to the to the foot plate, but now it's fine. Right. Okay, so now I think we can probably 
remove this port. Allez-y pour voir. So this is this move, and I think is the, the reason why we have this um, fluctuating hearing loss. So here, of course, it's a bit difficult because it's adherent to the stapes head. Can we move the marteau? Robert, have you ever seen in these cases that once you've removed the pork, you find there's possibly a fracture of the posterior? Uh, of course, e erosion. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. So you see, I'm doing it very progressively like this. I can control the, the, the effect on the stapes while I'm doing this and trying to stabilize the stapes with a sucker while I'm pushing the prosthesis anteriorly uh, progressively. Okay, and now it's fine. Now we can remove the prosthesis. We have this bleeding, which is uh, a bit of a problem here. Okay. All right, so now we need to remove the, the prosthesis. Tableau d'avance, s'il vous plaît. I'm just changing the spectrum hold holder. To have a better view, table en avance, if you please. Now we change the position of the, the patient moving the head anteriorly. Stop. Okay, so if I can remove the head. So, uh, Professor Trabalzini uh, wants to know what the hole is in the uh, posterior canal wall. You think. Uh, oh, I think it's. I don't know, <laughs> by the way. There is a history of repeated surgery in this case. So, I think maybe uh, in one case it was. Uh, I don't know. Really. So now I, I would like to preserve, if I can, a little bit the, the, per, the cartilage, because I took the cartilage already. It's a very nice uh, a plate of cartilage. So I hope this will be enough, otherwise I will have to take it from the conca. So this is why I'm trying to preserve as much as I can this area, but it's not easy. So you understand that I place the shaft of the prosthesis as much as I can to the right because of the of the stapes, of course. the stape is now. I think I'll have to perform a, a graft also because it's a quite atrophic here. And it's adherent. So let's see if I can stabilize the shaft on the promontory. Because I need to find a, a way to stabilize the process to dissect the head more accurately. So here is better. This, of course, is the difficult part of, the, of, of this uh, case. As soon as I will have removed the, the port, everything will be better. Ciseau, s'il vous plaît. Robin, we see that the, uh, obviously the, with the hydroxy appetite, it integrates very nicely with the soft tissue. Yeah. Have you ever seen the head actually Fixate to the sidewall. Yeah, it can happen, of course. Yeah, of course. And it can happen and fix to the bone. Wall. Yeah. To the bony canal wall. I think in the history of this patient, this happened at some point, and, uh, and there was a kind of bony plate which was removed. So I'm now removing the prosthesis. It should be okay. Just the important point for the trainees who are watching oh, the, the internet okay. is uh, the dissection of the distal end of the prosthesis first. Yeah. Off the stapes because it's much uh, much less trauma to the stapes. Yes, it's true. Yeah. Okay. Now we can remove the, the, the port. 
And I'm going to study a little bit more the tympanic membrane and then the mobility of the stapes. It seems to be that the stapes, yeah, yeah, uh, the stapes seems to be uh, really mobile, so we'll see that. Stop. If the stape is, if I have the feeling that the stape is hypermobile, then I would not use the silastic band, so I need to check. Sandra? Good. Bon. I don't think I, I think I need to is it this is better, right? It's good, it's good, it's good. Okay. Ecanne. Sorry, the Germans have just landed. So we're just uh, saying hello to Professor Lenhardt has just come. Oh okay. Oh, Thomas. This looks fine. No, I think we can try this. The the, See the, the band. round window reflex now. Uh, sorry, yeah, we can see it. Now. Yeah. So, I will try the, the band anyway. So, let's see. Uh, now I need to, there is no st stapedic tendon here. There is some. There is a nice place here for the managed replacement prosthesis. I will put it on, on the left. To find a gap here for the band, which now is fine. Okay. Uh, let's see how is the tympanic membrane now. Can they? Okay, so I need to check that. All right, it's fine. Okay, it's fine. So I may have enough with the cartilage plate, so we'll see. Okay. So now we need to place the malus replacement prosthesis. Hello, table vers moi, s'il vous plaît. Vous pouvez sortir la prothèse marteau, s'il vous plaît. And Grace. Stop. I will remove a little bit of bone on the left because I want to have uh, the malice more free, the, the handle of uh, the MRP a little bit more free inside the middle ear cleft. So I just need to remove a little bit of bone he from here. Uh, this correct again is quite accurate. Okay, now it's fine. All right, so let's go for the the malice replacement prosthesis now. So we're going to show you the prosthesis itself. So here is the MRP. So you see the two hooks on the left. It's too bright, so I'm going to decrease that. So you see the two hooks on the left and the malice handle on the right. So I will place it now uh, inside the, the, the middle ear and try to find, uh, try to find the, the, the position for the two hooks, which means that I will have to drill out, of course, two uh, corresponding uh, tunnels through the bony canal wall. Uh, we no need to find the location of them. So I will put it here, this way first. Bone is fine here. Yeah, it looks fine. So if I put the first one here, I think this bone is very thin, so I need to drill out very progressively. So I will try to make a hole here, and then I'll see for the second one. Let's try the first, first hole. Now, we're using a 0.6 millimeter diameter uh, diamond dust burr. I, will, I need to increase the light. Uh, and it's pedal now, using this uh, diamond dust burr. You remember that I was explaining this. 
And uh, at the beginning, I was using, uh, is, it, is it fine or maybe you don't see clearly? Uh, let, let me see if I can change the position of the, of the microscope so the view will be better for you, I guess. Is that okay, Dwayne? Yeah. John? Dwayne? Yeah, yeah that's fine, fine. Yeah. Sorry, man. Yeah, that's fine, Rob. Okay. So I'm just, I, I'm not using any more uh, um, the fluid, uh, irrigation. I'm just putting a little bit like this, directly with the, with the burr. Because I, I feel that the hole is better if we do it directly like this. So the first one is fine. And uh, we're going to do now the second one, which so, will be here. So just confirm that's a 0.6 millimeter yes. hole and a 0.4 millimeter diameter. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Is that, are you using a micro drill or your big drill? Uh, it's, a, it's a big drill. There we go. Now it's fine. So now I need to insert the MRP. So I will turn it on the other side. Uh, Robert, have you, have you opened one of these MRPs a year or two later? Is there any integration of the... No, I didn't see any integration, which is very surprising. I thought there will be, because of course it's titanium, so we thought that uh, with, the bone, with, the, uh, with the bone it will it'll still integrate it, but not really. I didn't see it. So it's pretty strange. And even, I think, even if it does also integrate in the future, uh, we study with the stoma, Thomas, Thomas Lena's department. We, as I said yesterday, we fixed the, the bone, uh, we fixed the, the, the MRP with cement in the bone, in temporal bone, and we study with uh, laser Doppler interferometer to see if uh, that was reducing the mobility of the prosthesis. And that was not the case. They were still vibrating. So it was a uh, really uh, nice study, which was very uh, interesting for us. Okay, now it's nearly done. Uh, I'm pushing the prosthesis down. And now we have a nice position. You see, it's really overlying the, uh, the, the, the stapes head. Of course, now it, it does change completely the situation, because we have a nice position of the new Mali sandal now. I will uh, lateralize a little bit the Mali sandal and le crochet plutôt, oui, ça, to place it a little bit more in contact with the tympanic membrane like this. And we need to study that. That's important to be sure that I will uh, cut the prosthesis at the right length. <coughs> so there we go. I think it's fine. I need to check that. It's not exactly it's really quite malleable, fine. isn't it? Yeah, it is never completely malleable. The titanium was that malleable. So this is now fine, I think. Maybe a little bit more, and maybe a little bit more like this. Yeah, I like it now, now like this. That's fine. OK, now we need to measure the distance from the stapes foot plate to the Mali sandal. C'est un oeuf que j'ai là, toujours? No, it's not a tray. Oh, sorry. That's perfect. Okay, the gap, you see the gap between the fascia nerve and the superstructure is not that large. But it's good enough. So we've got an elongated stapes measuring rod here. And I'm touching the foot plate. And we are now between the second and the third one which means 5.6, I will cut it at 6.5. 6.5 should be the right length. Okay. All right. Now, we, il faudrait me mettre la tête un peu en proclif, s'il vous plaît, la main. Stop. Okay. All right. So the, here is the Grace Medical Tour uh, with, the, uh, with the band in the middle. It's quite a really nice one. And uh, you remember, John, we were designing this together when we got this idea together to, to get this prosthesis already prepared with the band that you can see here in the middle. 
So I want to cut it at 6.5. So I have to take into account the fact that the, the shaft is, pu is pushed through the, uh, the prosthesis head, which means one millimeter. So I need to, to, put, to place the, 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 the shaft at 5.5. And then w when I will pull back the shaft, it will go back to the 6.5 length. So you can see now, we, the, the, the shoe, the distal tip of the shoe is at 5.5, which is fine. So I will now cut the, uh, the titanium distal tip here. All right, and then I will pull the prosthesis back and we get the 6.5 length torque. And we just tell the audience that this special cutter that he has does a better job than a scissors. Yeah, it's a better oh yeah. Way. For sure. Okay. Now, what I like to do is to uh, make an S shape. So I'll try to do it right now. Um, but I need, if I want to do this, I need to remove the plastic part. So I, I like to remove this part sometimes. I don't do it all the time, but here I want to make an S shape. So I want, I need to get a little bit longer uh, wire uh, part of, uh, of the shaft. This again is a detail, but I think that's important. It's this kind of things that makes the difference if we can. Um, all right, now it's fine. The bend will be like this, and now I'm going to make an S shape. So one side like this. This one is more difficult to bend than the Medtronic one, which was because it's very uh, malleable, as you can see. So it's not easy to make it. It's not absolutely necessary, but in this case, I think this will help. Ah, I forgot to make it stabilized. There we go. Now we have the S shape. And now I will put it uh, down to the foot plate and uh, I will attach the, the band, if I can, to the stapes. We'll see if it's possible. It depends on the mobility of the stapes. I still think the stapes is quite mobile, hypermobile. So we'll see if it's safe or not to do it. All right. So can I just be... Uh Devil's advocate here. Why do you not put the MRP in afterwards? Now you know it fits. Sorry. Why don't you take the MRP out and then put that in after you've put oh, it? Oh, oh no, because it, it, it's it, it's not possible then because you don't know exactly. If you put the, the MRP out, then you don't know exactly the length, uh, or or you need to place it, measure, and then remove the MRP. I think it makes this things more. Complicated. Just if, if, if necessary, we, we can just uh, push the, the malice entirely and then put it back because it's very flexible, so you can adapt that. So it's not a problem. We're going to do it right now, by the way, because uh, it's in the middle. So I, I will do it right now. Donnez-moi le cadenas, s'il vous plaît. I will push the malice handle like this entirely and I will put it back later on. So we don't need to remove it. Okay. Convinced. You are convinced well, by me. Sure you are convinced by sure me. Will go, but I am. Oh, all right. Okay. I was surprised that I was convincing you. Never happens in the past. Okay. So now we need to place first the, the, the shoe. And then I will attach the prosthesis. And only at the end I will place it underneath uh, the Mali sandal. There it goes, progressively, without tension. And we have some residual shaft in the middle of the head, so I see if I can place it like this or not. If, if not, then I will have to remove the prosthesis and cut it again. And, and pull it again. Okay, it seems fine. I just need now to attach the prosthesis to the staple. See if I can do it. Uh, that's the, of course, the tricky part now. Mm. 
Okay, trois de chocs, s'il vous plaît. All right. So I don't care about the position for the moment of the torque. I will replace the torque later on. For the moment, what I want to do is to place the, the band around the stay piece like this. So, and then I will see if I can then replace the, the processes in a better way. Of course, it's not easy here because I, I take care of the stay piece, which is really hypermobile. Let's see, maybe with a needle. Anyone a cadenet? <laughs> it's not good. So we'll try with the other one. I do it very gently in this case because of the staples again. I think I need to place it in this uh, here. And then I need to push this down. Okay, it's not enough. I need to place it underneath the, some kind of uh, fibrous tissue here or tendon. This is better now. Now, Wilco is just asking, he said you're doing this very slowly and gently, yes, but have you course. ever had a mobilization? I, I have to do it very gently, otherwise... Yeah. Have you ever had a mobilization? Oh, yeah, of course, it, it could happen. If, and, of course, it, if it happens, then we need to stop the procedure and just need the uh, just place the torque without the silastic band. Yeah. It's a difficult case here. You see how mobile it is, very mobile. So it's very, uh, now it's fine. We have a nice final aspect. So what are you going to do about the protruding? Uh, Sorry? What are you going to do about the protruding to take? Oh, uh, nothing. It's, it, it's fine because it's not a very big one. So I don't think it's going to change. We'll see that because it's titanium, so it can be yeah. in contact with the Mali sandal. It's not a problem. Uh, okay, let's see what happened now if I replace uh, the Mali sandal within the groove. Okay, now it looks fine. And you see that yeah, good. the final uh, app, it looks very nice because it, they are connected together. So we have a nice point of fixation with the band. And of course, another one with the Mali sandal. Can you move marteau? Then the last point now is to place the, to, and to post the cartilage. But it looks fine now. You see that if I move this uh, Mali replacement prosthesis, then maybe we, we could see the round window sign. Uh, let's see what we have. Yeah, we've yep. got a nice yep. round window sign, yeah, so it looks that. fine. Um, maybe I could try to push the band a little bit more down. I see if I can do it. Not quite. I would that. like to place it underneath this uh, kind of uh, residual tissue, but it's it's quite fine here. But I mean, maybe it would be a slightly better, but it's going to be difficult. No, I can't do it because... Sometimes getting it to slip down the notches on the shaft is a little bit difficult in this situation, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Oh, I think it's fine because, you know, it's very yeah. hypermobile. I don't want to mobilize too much, so it's fine. And I will now place the... I, I need to replace the tympanic membrane first to check how it goes. And this seems fine. I need to check again to be sure that everything stays in place, which is the case here. So it looks fine. So we just need now to interpose the, the cartilage. Okay. cartilage. So it's a very thin one. I took it from the trigus, but there was no uh, residual. It was not that much, so it was a bit. So I'm just going to ask the audience uh, whether they bit. have any questions this stage because they're, they're all very subdued this morning for some reason. I'm, I'm what? I'm just going to ask the audience whether they have any questions at this stage because they're all a little bit subdued this morning. 
Do you need to cement the They get malleus? bored now. <laughs> Do you need to cement the malleus to the uh, canal wall? No. No, no, no. All right. It looks from here that the shoe is not really on the... It's very far posterior. posterior. Sorry? The shoe of the top looks very far posteriorly. Yeah. Is that a misconception, what we have? Oh, it's in the middle. But that's, you know, you know the gap that I have between the facial nerve and, uh, and the stapy superstructure is not that large, so I just have to use. But it's in the middle. i show you again, maybe, because it's, it's perfectly in the middle. You see here the uh, anterior cruise here, the posterior cruise here, and the shaft is here. So it, that's in the middle. Okay? Uh, sorry? Yeah. It, uh, yeah. Okay, so just placing now the cartilage and then replacing the flap. Je prends une lame de silastique, s'il vous plaît. I need to check again, so just to be sure that everything stays in place, which is the case here. So it stays vertical and it's fine. So now just place the band, the, sorry, the silastic sheet just to protect the tympanic membrane and then we'll be fine. You see a nice uh, tension, a little bit, but not that much. So we can see a little bit of the bulging of, of bulging of the tympanic membrane, which seems fine. I'm just going to protect this part with a, a thin piece of silastic, and then I will put the marrow cell. Okay. Easy. All right. You don't normally use silastic, do you? This it depends. But if I have a, 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 a skin like this on a patient where it's been operated several times, I use it. Yeah. It okay, depends. This Not always. This is Maricel and Rifampicin. Yes, exactly. Okay, well, As usual. Okay. There we go. Okay. Well, fantastic. Really, really nice demonstration. <laughs> With this situation, who would have used a pork? A pork with a cartilage graft. Okay? Who would have used a torque? Who would have used a silastic band? Okay, so I'm in a sort of bit of a minority here, so Wilco. Um, I've, I've tried to, to use this, and uh, I think I fully agree with Thomas that it's quite challenging to have the right prosthesis to have it as a torque connect well. I have not silastic bending and when I see it, it's, it must, uh, you know, it's very challenging to do it. It must be fun surgery. That's one. I think the Dresden clip piston on a mobile stay piece like this is a very effective treatment, very easy to do. And um, I think that's my mainstay in this case. Nonetheless, if we can prove that the results are better this way, I would do it this way. But the Dresden uh, Borp would work very well with nice cartilage on it, and you, you don't need the malleus. So is there any more trauma to the stay piece from putting a Dresden clip on than uh, putting the silastic band? Or do you think the silastic band causes more trauma? Uh, it's like a cast up on a BMW, John. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a stupid question. Well, no, it's my, Wilco, come on, it's my job to, to controversy. Come on, this is what the course is about. Okay, uh, of course the Dresden clip is way, way more atraumatic. Okay. You want me to be, but it's a stupid question. Well, no, yeah, we're talking about the difference in panel okay. between the But uh, look at the gaskets of a BMW or a Rode. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I, I mean, it's the trauma to the stape is the surgeon. And it's, I, th I think the celestic banding, many who will start with it, it, it'll be quite traumatic. Because it seems very challenging to, to get it around. You need to be an expert. So I wouldn't advise, uh, say, a celestic banding. I wouldn't advise it. I haven't done, never done it. But it seems very complicated. A dressed clip is very easy, but you need to put it on very softly. And you, sometimes you can bend a little bit the legs so it fits easier. Of course, there is a risk that you will locate it or push it into the, 
in her ear, and that's not a happy uh, ending. Okay, thank you very much. Anybody else? It's, it's, it's uh, okay. A question from the UK. Um, just again, wondering if the prongs don't also integrate. With this particular bone, which is fairly thin, are there any chance of micro fractures because of the constant vibration, I wonder? Well, I suppose they are. I can't speak from my own experience. We can ask uh, Robert when he comes later. Uh, I mean, that malleus, uh, really, the malleus prosthesis is going to be held in position by the, uh, by the cartilage. Um, and really, all it is, if you like to think about it, is a prop to keep a prosthesis that is already fairly stable. I mean, the principle of the silastic band is the same as the principle of the teepee you build in your garden. We're back to gaskets here for the children. You know, if you put three or four rods together and you whip them around the top, you will have a stable structure. So it's just designed to be a triangular stable structure. Uh, and I think the, the, uh, the cartilage on the top just helps with that. But, uh, yeah, British engineer. <laughs> okay. okay. It's already uh, very, very mobile uh, stapes, and I rather uh, keep the tendon of the of, of the stapes intact and go like for the rest rather than. Yeah, well, he doesn't like to leave the tendon intact because his figures in using his ONDB database have shown that if he that if he puts the band around the capitulum. Um, he likes to tuck it underneath the remnant of the stapes tendon, otherwise it flicks off. That was what he did at the end, was try to push it down underneath the remnant of the tendon. It is already very mobile, yeah, I agree, I agree. And we, we go, we're going to grill him slowly about this when he, comes, uh, when he comes up later. That's part of the course. Thomas, do you want to make a comment? German engineering, Versprung Dirk Technik. Well, make it, make it simple and, and effective, uh, I think. It's great uh, what, what Robert Robert has developed, uh, and I think uh, one perhaps should go towards this direction to develop a prosthesis which really has these anchoring points. Uh, now, you also could think about this malleus handle. I mean, if you, and you had um, this kind of um, um, piece of metal sticking out of this prosthesis, so you could think about uh, connecting it to the malleus handle somehow. Version two, version two, okay. Thomas? But still, it might be tricky, so to get it really around that. Uh, but I think to use the malleus handle and have some grooves in it, something where you can clip, uh, clip. Thomas, on. we can't hear. Okay. Just a little bit closer. Sorry, we okay. No, I mean uh, to use the malleus handle and clip on something. Yeah. So, for instance, you have staples head where you simply could use uh, the racing prosthesis, whatever, and then you have in addition something that is really clipped around the malleus handle. I think I would say this would be easier, or for me more. Uh, no, no. But you know that Robert believes very much in the work of Fleming and Fenstro. You saw the slide that Chris showed of the, the, vertic the verticality of the prosthesis, um, getting it absolutely vertical, and this is a very good way of doing it. Right, well, I think we'll discuss that a little bit later on. One more, one more question. One more. Um, it was a question to you, actually. Um, as a very average middle ear surgeon... You mean me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I realise um, that. Uh, 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 you've obviously had to learn this technique, yeah. and we've already suggested that this yeah. is potentially difficult, and you see Robert do it, and you think, Whoa. so what was your experience of trying to learn to use that elastic band? Well, I started off shortly after Robert with, with making my own elastic band with the punch, and that was much more difficult. You saw, I think, a little bit of his video in the early days of doing that. This one, actually, I think is relatively easy to put on, mm. and I tend to use a 90-degree hook and a blunt needle just to push it uh, and nine times out of ten it will go on a very slow movement I think and Will Cole tell me again this is mythology that, that slow movements moving the stapes around probably don't cause as much trauma as rapid movements but it, you know there's a learning curve again and it's a good idea to go and have a play on a few temporal bones before you uh, let yourself loose on a patient with this one. Back to Wilco. Uh, I think a major advantage of what Robert is showing us is that it's another trick or tools in the in in the toolbox that we've got. When you run into trouble, you can use it because it, it, in in some cases it is very uh, interesting. Because what if you don't have a stable superstructure? You do need a malleus. Right? If there's nothing in here, then the neo malleus is fantastic. I mean, I mean, you you wouldn't be able to do anything. 
Of course, you would need to do use the vein graft if it's a fixed tapis, but if it's a mo just a foot plate, you, the neomalis is a good start to get some structure on top of it. So it works very nice, yeah. Again, you know, I'm going to highlight the fact that, that this course is not about this is the way you've got to do it. It's, it's again, an analogy, what tools have I got in my toolbox that I can use to help me get the best result? It's just to give you some ideas of what may or may not work. I mean, you've only got two ways of, uh, certainly if you haven't got the stapy superstructure, you've got a real problem. You've only got a couple of ways of stabilizing a, a torque. One way is to cut a hole in, at the disc end in the foot plate, which is risky if you haven't got a laser. The other way is to have some kind of neomalleus or something to attach the head of the prosthesis to the drum. And we all know that a lot of the talks that we do fall over unless we can do that. Okay. So, uh,